Okay, here we are. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Metaphysical Art Gallery's feature. We are featuring Ro Libretto. Ro Libretto is an amazing visual artist. She does allegorical art. And to, we are going to explore her process today and show you some of her amazing work on the website. So stay tuned. Well, thanks, Katie, for having me today. I appreciate it. And um, the first thing I want to start with is first, I want to say hi to all the crew that's out at Ghost Wolf Gallery because they won't be able to see this live tonight because it's first Friday and they're all partying at the gallery without me. But um, uh, what I have in mind for today is I want to show you the three paintings that I've been working on since the beginning of the year. And they're based on the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And I didn't create the paintings in that order because I didn't see them in that order and I didn't understand the concepts. So as, um, as the visions came to me, I painted them in the order that the visions came. And now I hear static. Do you have static on your end? No, I don't hear static. You sound fine. Okay, good. All right, so the first painting that I created was called the duality of hope. So what I'm gonna do is share that folder that has that piece of art in it so I can find it over here. And close that. And I guess I should duck that. There we go. So this is the duality of hope and it's um, 36 by 36 inches. It's a watercolor on a wood panel. And it's uh, it does have acrylic gold paint in it Ooh. in small sections like here and highlights on the anchor, which you probably can't see the highlights on the anchor, but they're there and the fish are outlined in, in gold. Wow. And the symbolism behind this had to do with anchoring your hopes to an ideal and how that makes you feel when you first find something new in your life and you're thinking it's going to be the be all and end all of what you want to happen or what you want to manifest. You become ecstatic and your spirit is up. And as you know, Katie, I know you know this, my paintings fish symbolize emotions. So here's the fish who's feeling really good about the hopes that he's anchored to. But when things don't go the way you want them to go, then you don't feel so good. So this is what this fish is. This fish is headed back into the tumultuous sea of emotions. Oh, man. He looks angry. <laughs> I'm sure he's frustrated and disappointed. That's a pissed off koi if I ever seen one. So uh, let's see if I can make sections of it larger so people can see some detail in it. Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. This. Okay. Ooh. So this is the higher consciousness, which we all know appears in many of my paintings. This represents the higher self, and it's based on the Catholic symbol for the Holy Spirit. So um, let's see. There's that. And this is actually your higher self is the anchor that you should be attached to. Not some oh. external hope, some external, oh. gee, you know, if I get a new house, my life will be better. And then you get a new house and your life sucks. You know, it shouldn't be that. <laughs> you <laughs> get a new boyfriend, do you think yeah. your life's going to be better? And then you're right. miserable. <laughs> and you're miserable, right? You have to really think in terms of the big picture. And to me, helping others helps defray the, um, the disappointment that happens when you get wrapped up in something that you want. You know, I really want, I don't know, a new car, but then I get hit with a series of bills and I can't afford the new car. So then I feel like shit. Well, don't worry about whether or not you go, you have the new car or not. Go out and help somebody through their, their personal crisis. And once you can do that, that's the higher thing. That's focusing on, the, on a higher good that's more than just you. That really does get you through a lot of bad times. So that that piece is called the duality of hope because it represents the anticipation of good things to come and the disappointment of when those when those things do not come to fruition. So that's that one. Now let's pull up the next one that I did in the series represents, I guess it's faith. 
And it's a really curious, it's a really curious take on it. I didn't understand the painting. I knew the painting was about faith, but I didn't understand the symbolism in it. And, and after it manifested and I started to paint it, I started to understand that faith is kind of based on your understanding of trials that you have faced in your past. Oh. And that once you understand the trials that you had in your past, I hear voices in the background. Are we sharing an audio? I'm sorry. I've got I've got um, people in the background. Let me mute okay. myself. Please continue. Okay. That's cool. So um, once you have an opportunity to look at the trials that you faced in the past and recognize how it is that you've come through to the other side, kind of, I guess, faith is acquired until it becomes intuitive. You know, some people, they can't have faith in anything. You know, they're so sure that no matter what happens, it's going to go to shit. And, and they just, faith and hope are pretty tightly knit. So um, I think that for those kind of people, it's important that they have the ability to look back. And if we look at the iconography of this painting, you can see that uh, this is the acanthus plant all over here. These little spiny leaves that you see, these little flowers and the spiny leaves on each side. And acanthus plants grow no matter what the environment is. They find a way to make it through. I need but, some of those in my yard. <laughs> that's what you do. I think so. I wonder if they grow out here in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> so... So I'm wondering if like maybe the, the canthus plant in this particular painting has already achieved a level of faith in being cared for in the universe. You know, it doesn't think about whether or not it's challenged. It just goes, I'm just going to go along and grow and be myself and do what I have to do. But in this case, the rose symbolizes the illuminated self, the self that has looked back and the symbols here of um, the triple goddess. So this is the, the, the child and the maid and the crone, crone. right? Yeah. So the symbol of the triple goddess has to do with being able to look at life from the past, present, and future, right? You have to look at everything. You say, I have faith that the future will take place. I'm standing in the here and now. I have the faith that the future will be good for me because I know I've gotten through all the stuff that's happened in the past. So this mm. is the this is the illuminated self, illuminated by an understanding of the past, standing in the present and looking forward to a, a better future. Your paintings are so vibrant before you put that chocolatey stuff on them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So here. But then after you put the chocolatey <laughs> stuff, it's like it's like holy. It looks holy. It looks like, it looks precious, you know? You know, I think that the messages in them are precious. Yeah. And this, and this technique, I think, allows that to be conveyed to the viewer. So when I stumbled upon this, when I discovered that I could do this, I felt like it was kismet. You know, it was supposed to happen. It, it's part and parcel for the type of work that I do. It conveys its ancientness and its value in both the past, present, and future. So um, that's what I, yeah, that's what I feel about. Somebody came in the gallery the other day and said, oh, it looks like that's some kind of ancient painting that somebody dug up. And I was like, yeah, man, that's what it's supposed to do. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Why yeah, not? Why not? <laughs> so also, since we're talking about the symbolism of this painting, the serpents represent the um, the unconscious self. Now you're going to see me cheat. I'm going to open up my cheat notes just to see what I got here. It says the experience of the past, blah, blah, blah. Where's my serpents? Oh, they're not here. It's not in this cheat note. It's in a different cheat note. Um, they represent the, the potential of the illuminated soul oh. unwinding. Uh, you're familiar with kundalini, the practice of kundalini yoga. 
a I little think, bit. Yeah. A little bit. So the the purpose of it is to awaken the coiled serpent within, and that represents the potential of the fully illuminated being. Ooh. And you it know is what said, I love about that is the, the process of a snake shedding its skin and growing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. As we shed the past and we become present, that's part of that symbolism. The, the piece itself is, it just repeats. It's very redundant in the story that it's telling. It just tells it with a, a, a different types of symbols, you know, yeah. over and over again. So, I mean, I hope and I'm it, not- And this one has so much symметry in it. I so like, it, yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I I'm love sorry. it, I, I love it. I love the concepts. I love Thanks. the allegorical concepts and the deep ar archetypical, just the guts of your work. They're great. Oh. It, 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 it really articulates the human experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think, I think uh, there's a transition that seems to be happening in my work now, whereas for a number of many years, most of my life, the characters that followed me around in time and space were very um, cartoonish, very exaggerated in their nature. And it seems that as I'm getting older, I'm finding the messages in more realistic looking objects or the, the objects appear more realistic to me. Now there are no absolutes in life. So who knows, you know, I could finish this series and then my whole head will explode and something else will come out. But, but for now, I find it really interesting. If you look at the weight of compassion, those were images that were drawn in kind of a realistic mode. And then um, this triptych that I'm doing now, the, the three theological virtues that, they have realistic looking imagery in it. Yeah. So I don't know where it's gonna take me, but I'm gonna keep going in this direction. You know, whatever I see, I paint, that's- Oh, that's, it's gorgeous. I love the way goal. this one glows. I love how the moon glows and the rose is glowing. It's just- uh, Thank you, thank you. So um, what I wanna turn people onto is that, and I'm, I'm going out now, away from this, we're going to, Let's see, my website, I wanna show people that if they wanna understand more about a painting, especially a painting like the uh, Illuminated in the Current Self, you can go to the search engine on my website and type in, is the Illuminated? <laughs> see, Illuminated in the Current Self, Ooh. And then in here, you'll see that there's a key and that's kind of what you're looking for. So let's find the key. Come on. I feel like the Jeopardy theme should be playing when you have to look for something. Where'd it oh, go? It's, okay. it's not taking that long. It's illuminated in the current self. Do I have to write the whole thing out? Did I spell it right? No, it did it before. Illuminated in the. Maybe if uh, you just try current self, maybe it'll come up. Let's try current self. So it was just there. There it there is. There it is. Thank you. All right. So the key, what what you're looking for, if you want to understand the individual iconography in any of my paintings, search for the painting by name. And then look for the key. And when you click on the key, it'll take you out to a, um, a blog entry that I do. And mm -hmm. I usually in intro it with a little personal information about what was going on for me in the story here. Oh, I love your blog, Ro. Uh, do you? I Thank do. You. I have a shortcut to it on my desktop. I haven't read very many of your posts, but the ones I've read, I've like, it, it just, you touch my Aww. soul. That's really kind, Katie. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. So as you can see here, what I do is I kind of break out the individual icons. Yeah. And that way, I mean, anybody can take anything they want out of my paintings. You know that. Yeah. But I try to give them the tools to help them do a little. Um, soul searching. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Soul yeah. searching. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. this is brilliant, Ro. Thanks, thanks. So what's the what's the third one? Oh, so the third one, uh, I don't know. Do we turn the screen off now so that you don't share? Turn Should it I? off so that it's just okay. us, and I'll show you this. The painting is behind. Hi, Caitlin. You sneaked up on us. Hi, hon. I see you. Hello. There. Hello. Yeah, I was, I was a bit you. late. I was at um, First Friday downtown, so I had to Zoom. Zoom back. Um, oh, I appreciate it. I wanted to be here. And this is just, I was mesmerized by your, your description. And it's, it's so kind of unfortunate that at gallery shows, we can't have the artists like just there in our ear, like, you know, to, to talk about for each one, because it's, you know, that's, again, it's, it's kind of the beauty of it, because then you have as an audience, you get to kind of explore that um on your own when mm -hmm. you show do you have like that that description next to your pieces the stories the, the stories are the stories that are on my website the individual iconography the definitions of the individual icons is only on my blog and if someone comes into the gallery and i happen to be there i'll help them with the iconography i'll walk them through it and i'll explain the process and and a whole bunch of stuff that you don't normally get you know because you're there you know that yeah, when you're there yeah, with your paintings yeah. you can you i know. think it would be have you ever thought of it would be really neat to have like a qr code um, i've thought of it but you know it, and then it would just link to that to that description and that iconography and, oh it'd be cool bro if yeah. you made I video it'd be really great i was like i wonder if are gallery viewers hip to that? Do they do that? Are they They're oh, starting yeah. to. QR oh, yeah. codes are picking up, finally. Yeah. yeah finally. Totally. They've been around, but people are really starting to use them. Well, thanks for the encouragement. I'll give it a shot, see how that works out. Yeah. yeah that would be, it's, it's, I think it's so neat to have that available, especially for these deep pieces that have these stories and this iconography and, you know, it shows that the work is linked to to the other work, and and it's so. And I know that younger the younger audience is definitely hip to it. It's yeah. It's the, it's the the people our age and older that that just aren't aren't there yet. But at the same time, they're also used to at galleries and museums having the the placards with all of the involved information and so i think especially with your work it, thank you it, it really has that that extra level that that is needed um to dive into it yeah. i appreciate it thanks for the suggestion and i think i'm gonna give it a more serious thought i yeah i kind of was brushing it off i was like ah oh, it's a new technology nobody's gonna want it nobody cares and then my idea is that who the hell wants to stand in a gallery and read anything so what's happening to my stories is they're getting shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> and I and I feel like I'm leaving stuff out because they really are. They're very, very rich. And every yeah. time I meet a new person and I explain a painting to a new person, I discover things about the paintings that I didn't really understand before. So um, yeah, that's a great yeah, that, question. That I, dream, I dream of having a row libretto book. Like a oh, coffee table someday book. it'll happen. <laughs> and and opening the book and seeing the image and being able to read the story and then having an encyclopedia where I can look up symbols in the back and like see what the archetypes mean. Like, oh yeah, like thing. a key. That yeah. would be super cool. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would be super cool. I know that that's available. I know that Lady Jen D, um, she does um, calendars and and little, uh, I guess, coffee table books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've seen them. I've seen and, them. And we're that, we're supposed to be getting some in uh, art storefronts. Oh, They're nice. supposed to be coming out. New merch, one of right? the, it's yeah. new merch, but that that's a new product they're going to be launching is the coffee table book because everybody has been asking for it. So we'll see what happens. Well, Ro, you need to jump on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's definitely definitely. So so wait, wait, wait. So here's my ego, okay? My uh -oh. ego. When I realized that there were stories associated with the paintings, what I wanted to do was create a 
portfolio, not a book, a portfolio. So each piece is printed out on fine paper and there's a vellum sheet over it. And the vellum sheet has the story printed on it. Oh, and it comes in a, and it comes in a box. It comes in a box. That, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, you know how fucking beautiful. expensive that it'd be. <laughs> you know what though? You, like people will, people will pay that. Pre-order. Like, yeah, pre-order totally. now, right? That's right. Totally. That's pre-order that's, now. You get it's, yours. It's so neat when you have like the the combination and the and the tying in of visual and print, you know. And and when we were talking to Pi Luna about about that, her work um, with her with work. the print and the poetry and the stories that go along with that, I think that there's, yeah. you know, there's this. <clears throat> specific, I don't know, subset of metaphysical art or, you know, allegorical art that, that almost you, you, you have to have the visual and the, um, the literature, the written word, because they go so well. And it's, it's different than incorporating, um, text in, in the paintings. It is very different. Yes. You know, which Lady Jen D does a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I love her for that. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting that so many of of the artists within metaphysical art gallery do have that kind of text element, you know, yeah. and that that deep um, um, literary aspect of it that that also takes you on that journey. And and so I I think it would be fabulous for you to have a book like that. And I don't think it's ego at all. I think it's 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 the the way that you as an artist want to present your work and feel that it should be presented. So there you go. Well, thank you very much. (laughs) Take take your ego and stuff it, Rue. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, moving on, (laughs) Um, the next painting in that series where I talked about the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity, is the painting that's behind me. And well, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, let's let's put you on the big screen. There we go. Okay. Hi, big hide. screen. I'm gonna hide our branding for a minute so we can see more Thank of you. the piece. Thank you. Let's see. How do I do that? There we go. Okay. All right. So here's the deal with this thing. <laughs> I kept seeing giant birds bringing flowers for days and I wasn't sure what the hell that had to do with charity. I, you know, I thought, well, it's bringing gifts. So maybe the flowers are gifts or whatever. And then I saw a halo above the bird and realized that that was a lotus. And that's when I started to sketch. I didn't know what the bird was. I made a bird with giant wings and I was sitting on the sofa doodling and I realized that I was doodling a pelican. (laughs) So I figured, oh, that must be the bird that I've been seeing that I don't know what it is because how often do we see pelicans in the Southwest? Like, why would I want to paint a pelican? So then I did some research and what I found out was that in uh, medieval times, those Christians thought that during times of starvation, the mama pelican would cut its breast and feed its babies from its own blood. Now this is total myth because we know for fact that pelicans don't do that. <laughs> but because but because of that misunderstanding at the time, um, ancient Christians felt that the pelican could be used as a symbol for Christ and also as a symbol of self-sacrifice, i.e. charity. So I'm figuring now that that's what's going on in this painting is that this is the mama pelican up here. And this you can't see them because they're just sketches right now. But there's three little baby pelicans down here in a nest. And um, yeah, that's what that I know that's as much as what that painting is about. I also know that there's some symbolism that goes on with the fact that the flowers below are tulips. And I can't remember if tulips are a loyalty or faithfulness or something like that. So I, I still have to do my homework and figure out what the tulips are about. And of course, the lotus at the top takes the place of where I usually put the, the Holy Spirit. My 
my symbol for the higher self, you know, because I'm Catholic, I always put that thing in. So um, the lotus takes the place of that. So the lotus has to do with uh, being locked into uh, your higher self and being charitable in keeping with the higher self. And in the background, you see all kinds of little hearts. And all those hearts have to be painted in. <laughs> I got to get to that. <laughs> there's there's going to be pink and gold hearts back there, in a, wow. probably with a blue background behind that. So I still have to work that stuff out. But that's in the process. Wow. That's so cool. I love hearing how it's developing, you know, that you you are. And it's always really interesting to me to, to kind of delve into the process and, um, so, cause it's so different for so many artists. Some like yeah. know exactly what they want the finished product to be. And they just like methodically go through and, and do it. But it seems like metaphysical art and just like the nature of it, it, it comes to us in bits and pieces and dreams. And, yeah. and, you know, you see this vision, you know, you saw a pelican and then you know, went into the meaning of it. And what a, I just want to take a moment here and say what a bizarre, strange thing for them to have decided that that was a thing. <laughs> I know, I know. Like, where do, why? Where do you? I don't know. I don't know. When I go to write the blog for this, after this painting's finished, and I actually like put some time into the thinking part of it, I'll figure it out and I'll figure out what the hell, where, where that, I was. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most bizarre thing ever. Like, oh, what I'm going to tell you another one that I found out that I didn't know about. My my, um, I have an old friend. Her name is Sharon Rogers, and she came to the gallery the other day to talk to talk in general. We haven't seen each other in I don't know twelve years or some shit. And she she started talking about the concept of secular piety, P I E T Y. Mm -hmm. Now you know that piety is usually associated with religious devotion. Oh yeah. Really so pious. Right. But actually what it has to do is the sense of honor and duty. And it's broader than just religious devotion. It is the sense of duty a child has in honoring and caring for its parents. That that's considered a pious behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's that voice. I'm, <laughs> that's I'm voice. sorry, I'll mute. <laughs> so um she got me to thinking about it. And I was like, well, I'm doing the, the theological virtues. I'm doing faith, hope, and charity. So how does piousness now fit into this, right? So mm -hmm. I, went, I went online, I went to Wikipedia, I think, to explore the definition of piety. Now you have to understand that my work is not just based on visions, but sometimes it's based on mantras. So when I started the three theological virtues, it was because one morning I woke up and I remembered my catechism and I could hear the little voice saying to me, what are the three theological virtues? The three theological virtues are faith, hope, and charity. And it became a mantra and it just wormed its way into my life until I created the three paintings, right? <laughs> so, for, so for Sharon to show up and in conversation, start talking about piety. And as she's speaking, I'm having a physical reaction to it. I could feel myself getting open you know that feeling like when you're meditating and all of a sudden you you have a an insight i know i'm not the only person who has this i'm not i know i'm not the only wacko <laughs> oh but anyway, yeah no i i totally i, I, I felt like that. i felt like what she was telling me was very very important and i thought well perhaps spirit is talking to me through my old friend and sharon's always said things to me that were very succinct and very meaningful in a very down home way. And she doesn't do it to like teach or preach or anything. She just has a way about her. And so when she said this explanation of piety to me, I said, well, I'm gonna go look it up now and see what the dictionary says, right? I'm gonna apply my intellect as opposed to just my heart. So I look it up in Wikipedia and talk about birds. There's a picture of some saint holding a, a lantern, st standing next to a stork. Now you want to tell me what the hell <laughs> a stork has to do with piety? I haven't got a clue. So now when I finish this silly pelican, I have to go and look at storks and see what storks have to do with piety so that I can I can consider what may possibly be part of my next painting. <laughs> Gotta have something to do with the babies they, they drop off. Yeah, right? baby. Yeah. 
Yeah. High, <laughs> high security, like a, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Piousness is duty and honor. It's an honor to bring a baby into the world. There's duty to bring baby. I don't know. I got to look that stuff up and see what that's about. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where the next painting's going to go. This is where that's where it's coming from, and that's where it's going to go. Wow. Have you painted many birds? Uh, like, is this is this a new thing, or this is, is a new thing? This is a new thing. This is that's a new thing. really well, interesting. And and I was just saying to Katie, I don't know if you were on at that time. I said that I noticed my work is going from the more obtuse imagery into more realistic imagery. The images that I see are more realistic as opposed to the images that followed me around for years, these very strange, uh, exaggerated cartoon-like characters. I have less and less of those in my life, which is a little bit better. It's less disconcerting. You know, like. Well, it's interesting, like the way you talk about meeting with your new friend and like feeling, or your old friend and feeling that like openness and, and I keep getting this like sense of like, like tuning, like tuning in, yes. in a way. Yes. And then um, also with tuning comes focus. And you just saying that, that these images now have changed and are more realistic. Like it seems like that tuning and focus is, is kind of, is, is bringing it in, in some, you know, in, in this very melding way. And so um that that just i don't know i just feel i feel that that you're like tuning in and focusing that's it's it's interesting that you say that my sister irene recently said i think that your new work is your best work ever i think yeah. it's really yeah that it's it is focused yeah so that's yeah. always nice to hear you it don't, is you nice don't, to hear you don't want to hear like oh your new work is crap the <laughs> 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 stuff that you did five years ago is is where, is where yeah. it was at. What the hell Right? Exactly. I, I remember I when I was in high school, I was working on a series and it was like shaded drawings that I was working mm -hmm. out, but I was doing the compositions and I was doing the line drawings. And when I do the line drawings, you know, I draw the areas of value without shading. Okay. So they look yeah. like these, they look weird. They yeah. look really strange. And my friend Evelina looked at my work and she was like, what happened? Like, what is this? Like, they what are you? It. it wasn't finished. <laughs> well, that's, it was that's, done. Yeah, that's judgment. always so interesting when, I mean, it's a, it's like a, a double-edged sword in a way, um, showing your work in, in progress. Because there are people that absolutely love it. And I've, I've found that. I was like, why does someone want to see a not finished piece? But when I post on social media, people love those progress, that was you know. Yeah. Speaking of progress shots, Katie, I want to share some, um, let's see, should I, let me first see if I can find the picture. Excuse me, Caitlin. Let's see. There was, how should I start it? Let's start with the number three video. Okay. Katie, you have that, right? All right, when I click on it, it's gonna to start to play. So what I'm gonna do is- Hit is... the pause button when it, when it starts to play. Can you do okay. that? Yes, I can. All right, is it the big screen there? Now you can hit the pause button like that. Yeah. Does it work? Okay. So Caitlin, to what you were saying about progress shots, you see how bright this painting was when I started painting it in, right? So a lot of times people look at this stuff and they're like, oh my God, it's so beautiful, it's so colorful, it's so bright or whatever. And then I look at it and I think of, of it as flat and lifeless. Yes, it has bright colors on it, but to me, it doesn't have character. And there's, there's not that depth. Yeah, the yeah. depth isn't there, the visual depth isn't there. Right, so right. In, in this particular video, what I'm doing is I'm applying a, um, a mask, a liquid mask to the moons because when I put the brown wash on, it tends to dull everything out. And I really, really wanted these moons to be very, very luminous. So I wanted to protect the surface. So that's what's going on in this shot. And what do you here use we go. for your mask? Um, I used to use uh, a Liquitex product but on, uh, on this wood, I found that this peel tech stuff, which is like almost the commercial product for house painters. 
yeah, that's how I found it on a commercial painter's site. And it's thicker than the Liquitech product. It's more like liquid rubber. You really feel like you're putting rubber down. And the trick to it is make sure you apply it very, very heavily or you can't get the shit off. It just like oh, sits in every nook and cranny yeah. and it's really hard to get yeah. off, right? So, but mm. there's the product. You can see it. You can see it right there. Oh, there's yeah. that. Okay, and now if we go to the next video that I sent Katie. And here I am. I'm going to pause it for a minute. Oh, go. Whoops. Okay. That's it. That can stay right there. So as you can see, I have a garden hose. <laughs> That's like, here's the garden hose. Here I am at work. And I had, oh, shoot. I should have showed this picture first. Let me show you what it looked like. This was, can you see my screen? Here's your screen. All right. I want to get that up. Hang on. Not that one. This one. So this is what the painting looked like. You see the green in here? Yeah. This little whitish kind of color. That's the Peel Tech product. That's the liquid rubber. Right. right. And, okay. Yeah, and I see that. The whole rest of it is covered with brown paint. And I painted it in two directions. I want to see if you can see the pattern. You can't see the pattern. Too bad. All right, but you can see there's one direction here and there's some brown lines here in the other direction. So I paint the brown paint in two directions. Okay, so there's that. Then if we go back to the video, this video. Do you have it, Katie? The yeah, oh, I'm adding it yeah. to the stream now. Yeah. So now you can see that I'm washing the brown paint off the surface. And I changed the dial on the uh, hose head in one of these shots. Let's see if I can stop. And what is what is the paint? You must have water soluble paint in in some way to be able to. It's a it's temper paint. The paint that's on the bottom that makes up the original painting is watercolor. So it's gouache or it's translucent tube watercolors. The brown paint that I cover it with is a brown temper paint, and you know temper paint like little kids use. Right. So I coat it with that. And then the, the trick is that it's got to sit a lot of days between steps because it has to. The translucent watercolor paint has to stain the surface of the board before you put the brown paint on it, because once you put that brown paint on it, it's going to it's going to tear the other stuff up. You know, it's going to like brush the watercolor paint off the surface. And you right. Don't want that like I've, that's one thing I've never understood about watercolor is is. You know, as soon as you put water on it, it, it dissolves again. So how you, you put it on there and it stains the wood? So uh, let me see if I can. Okay, so I start with a plain wood panel. If you spray it with the hose, it's going to take off all that paint. Like unless you Some seal it. it, but then it, the brown it takes paint a will be. That's right. Ahead. That's right. Okay. Oh my God. So it's. It's it's an art, not a science. <laughs> so um, <laughs> how I start how I start is with a solid wooden panel, like you see, like a lot of us paint on these wooden panel things, these birch panels, right? But instead of coating it with a regular gesso paint, like you would if you were using oil paint or if you were using acrylic, I use a product called a cold press ground. And the difference between that and a regular gesso paint is that it's porous. It has some kind of sand in it. It's got a little. It looks a little glittery. But it's because it's porous, the watercolor paint is able to sit in those little nooks and crannies and stain it. Now, you have to use a high quality watercolor paint. You have to use something where the ratio of pigment to media, you have to have a high ratio of pigment, right? And you also have to choose paints that are considered staining colors. And you know that from your own research and your own painting stuff that you have to do. So Thalo. I paint. <laughs> <laughs> so I paint. I love phthalo. What am I on top of, So I paint on top of the cold press grounds with that. And then I have to let it sit a bunch of days for it to stain. And then after it's totally dry and it's had time to stain, then I put the brown paint on it. And when you put the brown paint on it, you have to wait for one coat to dry. You can't go back. You have to make one stroke with the brown paint. If you look at, I have a YouTube video called Watercolor Technique, and I'm painting the brown coat on a piece called Abolomania. 
And you can see you have to make that brown paint in one solid stroke. If you go back choppy, you're going to tear up the watercolor paint that's underneath it. So it's one stroke. And when that dries, I put the second coat in the opposite direction. So that's how that works. And then here we are back to this washing the darn thing. I think. Can we make it go? Can I make it go? There. There it goes. All right. And I changed the hose head setting. You see this work I'm doing in here? Yeah. When you see the original painting, there's all these tight little lines in that area. And what I had done was I changed the setting on the spray nozzle on the garden hose so I could get a very fine line. I used to use a water pick for that, but this allowed me to, to do that. And then we can go back and we can see what the finished painting looks like, which is sharing my screen again. I hope I'm doing it right. I have to go oh. like this. Oh, we're still like watching this. your video. You so here, let me. Yeah, we're okay. watching the whole, the whole one again. Your... You're watching the this whole is... washing. That's cool. Very good. Yeah. You know what though? That <laughs> that is, I'm sure, so satisfying. I'm sure that's a, a subcategory in and of itself because there's also people love varnishes. There's hashtag varnish porn, and so people just love watching. These processes, the process of things. Yeah, how, Rose how, process makes me cringe, though. I think it makes everybody cringe. It's, it's like, oh God. like, how did you like? Did you totally fuck something up at first and, and like no. wash? No, uh -uh. no. How it happened was, what are we looking at? So I know that I'm looking at the right screen. We're looking at your screen. We're looking at okay. your screen at the finished painting. So this is the this is the final finished painting. You can see the character that it has. All right, so I'll tell you how it started. I'm gonna close this out and we'll go back to we'll go back to you guys. So I uh, should I I don't want to stop sharing my screen yet. There you go. Okay. So I have a here, here's oh, what sorry. happened. So Ro, Ro, excuse me. I'm oh, so sorry. Oh Carol is here. Hi Carol. I know I, I didn't I didn't do the camera because I didn't do the camera and I okay. tried to Turn it on afterwards, but anyway, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. It's it's six o'clock here when you start, so that's dinner time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, thank easy. you for joining us. Thank you for stopping in. I, appreciate I have that. a question. When you were washing off uh, your picture, and then when you showed us the final one, that yeah. was it. That was there was no changes. I mean, it, it looked different. It, it looked. It looked like it was going to be gorgeous when you're washing it off, but when you actually showed it, it was just stunningly gorgeous. Well, it, there are details. Better. There are details that get filled in afterwards. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, I won't lie. There's not, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> you want to make sure that you still have the contrast to the piece, and the piece yeah, looks impactful. Okay. You know, yeah, that, that's where that whole art that. school thing comes into play, right? Because <laughs> yeah. anybody could wash a painting and leave it, but then. It's the perfectionism that you develop in, as an artist that you, okay. you know that comes into play to do that. So yes, I do touch up sections. I didn't have to do a lot with that one. That one pretty held pretty well, oh and um, and then I coat it with the an acrylic clear sealer. Yeah. So so Caitlin was asking about how I discovered the process, and here's how it went. <laughs> I had become very anal in my watercolor work. It was getting tighter and tighter and more realistic. And it was just, it hurt to make it. It was just, I don't know. It became more about the, the process of controlling the paint to force it to do what I wanted it to do than it was about the, the message that had to be conveyed. So I was getting to the point where I just didn't want to paint anymore. And oh, one, day I, one day I said, I got to do something because I'm going to lose my mind. I can't, you know, I cannot paint. You know, you're a painter. You can't not paint if you're a painter. So um, I remembered a technique that I had learned in college that we taught little kids. And it's kind of a temper paint batik technique. So what you do is you take a plain white piece of paper, and it's usually a cheap paper, like a newsprint something. And you take colorful temper paint and you paint shapes, but you leave space between the shapes. You leave negative space all around the shapes. And then when the temper paint is dry, you cover the whole thing with India ink. And then you wash the painting and it looks like batik. 
Right. So the spaces. Standard. Yeah. Yes. So the spaces and wherever the temper paint cracks, you know how temper paint gets when it dries. It's, you know, not really solid on the paper, especially on cheap paper. The, the ink would go into those spaces. In fact, I have one of those pieces from college hanging in the bathroom in my house, but I'm not going to carry the computer. Someday you'll see. <laughs> so anyway, because I liked it and I had it hanging for such a long time, it was in my head and I was like, well, I wonder if I can do that. So I made a painting and I did it. And I was like, oh, this looks like what I see because it's blurry, you know, and it's got some dirt on it and it's not. You know, it's weird. It's like I actually see the pieces like this. I said, I'm, I'm going to try to do this again. So I did it again. And the, a bunch of the pieces I did initially, when you go to my website, you'll see there's a section that says ink top coats. There's a wood, uh, wood panel paintings. There's temper coated paintings. And then there's ink top coat paintings. Those ink top coats were the first ones that I did using this technique. So they look different from the other things. Katie, are you scrambling to find it? Yeah, I if am. You I'm if you going share to your my, website. I was going to say, if you share my screen, I can find it. It's portfolio, ink top coat. Are you sharing my screen? Do we got it? Did yeah, you I'm see sharing it? your okay. screen. Yeah. So you see these things? Yeah. That's how, so this was the beginning of that technique for me. Wow. And in some of them, like this one, I actually did use temper paint. Wow. And that's a hot press watercolor paper that it's on. Wow. And you can see how the paper gets rubbed. You know, when you put the yeah. ink on it, and the paper takes a beating, it really does. So you have to use a good quality watercolor paper. Oh, but yeah. that's, so that's how that started. And it was the dawning of this looks, this looks exactly like I see it. This is the closest that I have ever been able to paint to the way I see that. That's such a great me. feeling when, yeah. when you're like, this is what's in here and, and yeah. I got it. I got it here on the canvas. <laughs> so this one is on the Metaphysical Gallery website. Yeah. Right. And that is, that's temper paint. That's that magenta pink temper paint that people like. Kids love it. And you see how I incorporated words. I knew there was something to say, but I didn't know how to say it. So like Despite Caitlin, like you considerable mentioned. considerable effort, reality gets the upper hand. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole story behind that one too. Oh, man. I, would, not, be, I, I would be disappointed if there wasn't, Ro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's where that stuff came from. And that, and, that piece we were just looking at, it's like worlds within worlds, but they're being swallowed or something. And yeah, the mouth so, is being held open. Like so, what's going on there? So here's what this piece is about. And I should talk about it because it is on the metaphysical art gallery site and it's available as prints. The limited editions of this piece sold out. So I made it available at smaller sizes so that if people want it, they can get it. In fact, let's go to Metaphysical Art Gallery right now. We can go to About Artists. Find me. I'm here. Where am I? I'm here. Works by Ro Libretto. Did I do it right? Yeah. Okay, Works by Ro Yeah, Libretto. that'll pull up all your stuff. Okay. And here she is. So you have the original there. The original is for sale. I still have the original. And it's framed, which is another story. It's <laughs> framed with this. It's It's got the coolest. Let me go back. Because I think I took pictures of it framed. I know we only have like 10 minutes left, so I shouldn't. Oh, it's OK. Anything. It's OK. No rush. I want to find the pictures of this one framed because the framing is kind of cool. Uh, there it is. All right. So here it is in the frame. There. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. But the close up, I'm hoping that the, the glitter in the frame, this is a woven texture frame uh, mat here, oh, this woven mat. Cool. And this woven mat has some kind of glittery substance in it that doesn't come across here. And the contrast between this and the painting is fabulous. I absolutely love it. And I love this little textured edge. Yeah. 
You say it's, it's like glittery? Not full on glitter. Like the woven fabric is some kind of metallic fabric. Oh, that's so neat. when the light strikes nice. in a certain way. That's neat. I yeah, think that, so that, that, that would be really cool. cool to see in contrast because that bright yellow in there. Yes. Like, I'm yeah. Sure, like, yeah. And, and that was kind of what did it for me when I saw the two things together. I was like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. All right. So now if I want to go back and find the print. Do, do, do. These are always this, great. The, these interviews are always great because yeah. it's it's we end up showing how how like it's almost like a tutorial of how to navigate through the website. Yes, <laughs> which is yeah. great. It's an in, it's a pretty intuitive website. I really I really like the way it's set up, and I love love the views of being able to see it. Oh, all right. So wait, I got to do the view then, right? I got to do the yeah. view. the wall so, preview. Yeah, let's see. So yeah. I want the. Watercolor paper, right? Can I do it framed? Yeah, yeah. I think let's see. Yes, uh, your because style. it's a weird size, go right? Pick, go pick the two number two tab, style. Number two. Style. So just pick size. a big pick a big I'll one. Take that one. Oh, okay. Oh, let's go this one. That was a big one. Yeah. I think, I think that the big one is bigger than the original. All right, continue. No, no, no. no. Yeah, here. Oh, just the print. No. I print. apologize. Right? Yeah. So this is just the matted print, but this is the framed print. Yeah. So I should do the frame print so we could play now, right? And then yeah. I go to the room view, which is down here, wall preview. Wall preview. Very preview. cool. We love very cool. Yeah. You want to give it a different frame? I want to give it a different frame. So I have to go back, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go back. That looks so I also like how the, the rooms that they, they put it in are are kind of neutral. So you can really have like any piece and the piece just pops. It's wonderful. Yeah, and you can change the wall color. And I think I'm yeah. gonna do that and once I get through back here. You can on, change the wall color? Back. Yes, you can change the wall color. Yeah. I think they like Sherwin Williams colors or something like that. Yeah, right, they so use um the the default color. You can make it any stones. color, the wall. But they, their default colors are the most popular paint tones that were chosen by people. Well, I've been out of this. Okay, so here's the frame. Now, how do I pick the kind of frame I want? So pick pick the frame and then pick, go to continue. Or, or continue. Pick the frame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now go to continue. Yeah. Well, I've been That's hitting those tabs. There you go. Now you can pick and choose. So now I can go, oh, look at this. That's a black satin with a gold trim on it. I don't know. I'm I'm that kind of girl. Let's try that. Oh, look at that. See, now that looks like a classic, right? A classic yeah. frame. That's the four-inch mat on it. It really sets the piece out. Let's see how it looks with a three-inch mat. Three-inch mat works. Yeah, I like the three inch mat. All right, so now I'm I gonna like that. It actually view. the three inch mat makes the it it it's bigger, you know, like the the piece is bigger, but it still has that like, you know, it it makes it pop. I don't know what I'm yeah. trying to say. <laughs> I I just very much, and it keeps I keep coming back to this in my head with this piece. It so reminds me. It feels like jazz. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Oh, because the, <laughs> horn, the pink on the bottom is like a horn or... Like, I don't know. It just, it makes, yeah. me, it makes me feel jazz somehow. So I, it's very interesting. I love, I love oh, how certain, certain pieces, you know, I, I music to me, music and, and art goes so, so well. Like I have to be listening like to something when, when I'm working. And so this, I mean... In in a gallery, I would love to have Sorry. like jazz piped into the the sound system. Yeah. As it. <laughs> I was listening to the Sonics the other day, which is like garage punk rock music. When I was at the gallery the other day, I was like, well, whatever. I'm the only one here. <laughs> it turns some people away. I, I go, if they like the music, they'll come in. They probably like the same stuff I like. They're gonna like my work, you know. It's, it's that type of thing. So here's, do you see, Carol, how you can change the colors? I did. Of the I have Isn't been. That fun? Out Touch. This, uh, fun. And then, of course, you could change the room. I know. I know. I, I, oh. I figured that because I saw. I got to say something about the framing. I got uh, a, a piece of 
art framed through this company and uh -huh. we'll do it. It was superb. Yeah. I was very impressed, worth every single penny. <laughs> That's good to it, hear. It, it that is. is. Good to hear. I, I very, always very happy well, with it. Whatever service I go through, I, I I really try to product test and you know get order something so that I can know that you know my stuff isn't being you know, it's not crap that, that right. people are buying. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to put my name on something that's a piece of shit. So. Yeah. I feel the same way. I feel the same yeah. way. Let's look yeah. at restaurant. <laughs> look, look at restaurant. That's just a table and chairs kind of like a cafe. Is it? No big deal. Oh, yeah. See? Oh, sad. It, yeah. Look how big like, that painting is. I know. I know. That's Ooh. a big one. That's 24 by 41. You know, they would have a hard time eating. <laughs> they would just have to turn their chairs around so they all faced it. They, no one could not look at it and watch Thank you, it I think. And, and talk about it. All right. So here, let's tell you, let me tell you about the painting so that you understand the yeah. iconography in it. All right. So, oh, I didn't pick a color mat. So that's what it does when you don't pick the color mat you want. Hmm, all right. I got to remember that. Okay. So the concept behind this is, Things come up in our lives that we try to avoid. We try to avoid them so hard that we twist ourselves into caricatures of our true self. So see the eyeballs looking in the other way, the face is looking one way and the eyeballs are like trying to get out of the head. I don't want to see it, don't show it to me. And the figure is going into the character's ear to plug up the ear. Oh, wow. And the hand that says stop, you know, talk to the hand, that kind of stuff. So yeah. this character is trying its best to avoid whatever it is it's trying to avoid. But it knows. Here's the subconscious. You see how the fish is swimming upside down? The fish is in this character's subconscious mind. That's what all of this crap is back here. Oh, and the it's, subconscious water. And the subconscious has the message. And it's sending the message. And it's sending the message. And it's sending the message. And I'm trying to avoid it. Here's my eyeballs. I'm looking the other way. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And each time it comes around in the subconscious mind, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until the real world grabs you by the chin, opens your mouth, and shoves it down your throat. And there's no way out. Here it is. Oh. Here's the reality that the character has been trying to avoid. It's now shoved down their throat. So oh, that's what man. that one is about. Wow. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. Do you have a video? Yeah, yeah. I think it's on. Let's go back. Let's go back to metaphysical galleries. I think in the original painting, it's in the description. Oh, you should put it in with uh, print. I tell you, that's I'm so realistic. Sure yeah. Let's see if it's in here. It should be in here. Was that an octopus? In one of my pieces, there is an octopus. Oh my yeah. God, I love it. <laughs> I, see, I, don't know, the story. <laughs> I don't know if you know how much I love octopus. I've painted like a dozen octopus. I have a giant I've octopus. I've seen your octopi. I have seen your octopi. <laughs> and Caitlin, have you seen my octopus friend on Netflix? Yes, yes, with the with the guy. Yes, it's it's so like I had to watch it in two parts because it was. I just, haven't it was, seen it yet. I just saw the too, preview and I was oh, like, it's, made it's me really, want to cry. Yeah, it's Aww. really good. All right, it's now really I have good. to watch it. See, now now you got me to where I have to watch it. All right, so, let's see what else. Since I'm since I'm here, here's the story. Anything else? Anybody else have questions well, about the story while I'm here? In with the print, but it should be with the print too. Well, here, let me look at the prints and see if it's in with the print. We'll back up. Uh, I can't remember. Some of if them, I, I still not. need to, I still need to um, put the, um, the originals with the prints that match. Oh. I, I still need to do that with some of oh, the pieces. <laughs> like is one listing, you mean? Yeah. Um, oh, here it is. Yeah, there it's it with is. the print. See, you there can click is. the original painting yeah. from the art print. You can't mm -hmm. click the art print from the original painting though, because uh, they, they do it on purpose. It's an upsell when you're looking at the print and you get to see the original. It's an upsell. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Cool. Can All we, right. right before we go, can we please look at that octopus? Well, there you have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll look at the octopus. Let's go find the octopus. It was right there. Come on now, y'all. In our grass. Now, Oh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. This one. I don't even know what's going to fit on the screen. If Beware I the company you keep. Beware the company you keep. And it's like uh, 
Right, it's, it's Kipling's poem. And do if, you paint this on an old door? This, yes, you're right. This is one of those pieces oh, that I painted on a door panel, a hollow door. So it's huge. Oh. It's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's big. Th 32 by 80 inches. Oh, yeah. that's <gasps> sweet. Yeah, it's just my octopus. Hello, octopus. There's the guy being taken over by the minions of the charlatan. Here's the charlatan. Here's, here's the whole emotional upset. This guy doesn't know whether he's coming <laughs> or going. You know, you know, I use fish to depict emotions, right? Upside, downside. If you've seen it in a couple of my paintings. Well, here these fish are attached. Yeah. This guy is seriously confused. So he's all like twisted up inside. Oh, man. He's lost his way. We need to have, because I know more, I know Jen D has uh, an octopus. I know there are a couple other. We need to <laughs> just have, we need to just have an octopus show. We're like, doing an octopus show. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a octopus mermaid thing I've been working on. It's That'd be cool. <laughs> Does this mean I need to make an octopus with crystals? That means, yes, that's right. You have to make a crystal with octopus. Crystals. That's right. Right. Or, find, or find a crystal that's called the octopus crystal. Ooh, <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. I have one that's a bear, believe it or not. Oh, it's clearly a bear. Find like the, the cells that are the the, the most prevalent component of octopus or something like that <laughs> ah. yeah that's true oh, man that's my dad one. sent a me one. a uh what is it called it looks like a painting it's super colorful super high detailed it looks like abstract art but it's not art it's not a painting it is the most detailed electronic image that has ever been taken of a cell Ah, okay. Dang. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. no, there, that is cool. Cool. beautiful. Like that. Microscope cell. Like yeah. Microscope. Yeah, there yeah. are cells that like spread out and have like tentacles and stuff. It's, it's fascinating. Oh, yeah. There's diatoms yeah. like that too. Ro, thank you so much for sharing your work today. It was a pleasure to see uh, it and learn more about it. Thanks. Yes, Thanks for thank listening. You. I appreciate it. Caitlin and Carol, I really appreciate your questions. Thank you. Because every time you oh. ask a question, you you ask the question that other people out there have wanted to know and just didn't have the nerve to ask. Right. So right. thanks yeah. a lot. I, <laughs> I, I will never it. not have the nerve. So <laughs> well, that. I want to go that. back and watch the beginning because I missed half of it. I am so sorry. Um, but I, I, what I saw was made makes me have to go back and watch the beginning because I've got to do that more. Cool. So it's cool. really thank you. Do you teach classes? No. <laughs> no. You should do so something. If if somebody wants to learn how to do it, God knows I post enough on social media and I post enough on YouTube. They could just teach themselves like I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well drats. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This was so lovely. It's always wonderful to, and I could talk for hours about process and, and, you yeah. know, all of that, especially with, with, you know, paintings and artists that actually in, infuse meaning into their work. Like, yeah, that's, that's so much more interesting to me and just getting all of that diving into your brain and, and just kind of pulling that out is so much fun. Thanks. Thanks. So Katie, who's your next interview? I know that you have some podcast, the wet stuff podcast coming up. Uh, and let me, uh, Joe Cardillo is our next interview on the wet stuff podcast, but let me see who's up next on the metaphysical art gallery. It's going to be, sorry, I got to pull up the calendar to find That's out. That's all right. Calendar. Our next is Jonah Liu. <gasps> oh, good. Nice. Cool. cool. I want to see what's up with her. Yeah. yeah. Her stuff is really developing too. It's really oh, getting man. I'm, right. I'm excited for it. All right. Her atmospheric space paintings. So I look, I look forward to seeing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having me. Thank Carol. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you too. I'll see you in what? Three, three months, three months. I'll be back. Right. Three months back here or three months you're going somewhere? No, three months back here online. Okay. Yeah, we cycle through. Oh, no. Katie, you're all right? Yeah.
Don't yeah, try. coughing. Don't die. Don't die online. <laughs> 12 weeks. Okay, well, I'm waving goodbye. To Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye, again. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.